the biggest problem in this country is facing us today, at least the, what I call working class of people, is corporation rights versus our rights. They trump us every time. We have many problems. We have you know, bio sludge, dumps, excess growth. We had quite a gathering trying to fight yet one more hog farm. The contaminated water, the air pollution. We call it unreasonable development, unreasonable sprawl. Everybody knew that there were toxic waste dumps spread around these mountains. Frustrating, you know, you, you work hard and try to have something nice and along comes a development and they just destroy it. We don't seem to be able to make decisions about anything in this country. You know, majorities coming together within communities lack the authority to make the types of decisions that they need to make to build the types of communities they wanted to build. And so all we did with the democracy schools really was try to answer the question, why? This area right over in here and the other, on the hill over there is where the sludge was spread. Sludge is anything that's flushed down the toilet, which they changed the name now to biosolids. Both my sons walked this way to come home, walked right down, walked right by the fields every day. And if you're smelling it, you're breathing it. Everything was fine until our son got sick. And the doctor called us in and he said to us, we did his culture. And he came back and he sat us down and he said it's staffed. I just knew he wasn't going to come home. We actually heard the machine flat, well you could see it flatlining. Yeah. And I said to him, just let go Danny, I said just go. And I had to go up and tell my son. He was 16 at the time. They were 13 months apart, so I had to wake him up. He, well, I don't even know if he was sleeping. He was laying in bed. I wake him up and tell him, hey, your brother just died. Yeah, I'm sorry. So, yeah, that was dope. An article was in a newspaper about sludge being applied to fields. Within two years after finding out what killed him, they brought the suit, and the courts said, sorry. Uh, we're not even going to hear it. You got to stop it. You know, your rights are being violated. You're being dumped on, literally being dumped on by, by, your, by your state government and your local government. It's real people making real decisions to deposit crap on other people and, and kill them. That's why the democracy schools are around, because people don't understand your, what your rights. their rights are. You get into the school and you go, wait a minute, I have a, I have a say in this. In Pennsylvania, we have had two kids die after coming into contact with land-applied sewage sludge. One of those kids was Daniel Pennock. It's who this school is named after. Every, every school actually is different from the previous one, not just because the configuration of people is different, but because we all keep evolving. And the reason I came to try and get some of our control back in our hands, local control, take it away from Harrisburg and take it away from Washington, D.C. What it is corporate personhood and why it isn't to our advantage. I'm mainly concerned about the corporate power of the media system. What is it we don't know about this country that prevents us from being more effective organizers? Tonight we're going to be talking about our work within the regulatory system. The environmental laws in the United States are the best at legalizing uh, certain activities by uh, corporations uh, in what they want to do. Essentially they legalize how quickly we will destroy the planet. By doing everything the way the regulators were channeling us into doing it, we were, we were being set up to lose right from the start. They had found contamination down to a depth of 37 feet underground, and they were only cleaning up the top 12 feet. We wanted to believe that the EPA was here to protect us. We talked to our senators, we talked to our local elected officials, we, talked to the, we went to every city council meeting and badgered them, and we just got stonewalled. That's when we realized that, hey, you know, these corporations have more rights than we do. The only thing that environmental regulations regulate is environmentalists. After you've deconstructed the regulatory system, then it's about building from the ground up and teaching hidden histories. Uncovering the facts that aren't evident to us when we take our history classes in school. In the beginning, the colonies were private property. Uh, they were given to people to vacuum out resources. That was the point of the colonies. Uh, a relative handful of people historically have taken control of, of the reins of government, have written the law, have written the constitution. England as a slave and global empire, which forms the, the basis for our American legal 
and constitutional traditions. It's the history of racism codified in law. People think that our own governmental institutions are working for us. This is about revealing from camouflage and illustrating that the governmental institutions are not ours. And then we mix the hidden histories in with people's movements. How people struggled in the past and what they learned and what we can learn from, from their work. What this was about was breaking illegitimate laws. Okay. The, the American revolutionaries didn't go to a court and ask a judge to say that the revolution was legal. <laughs> the Knights of Labor and the folks who attempted to drive the rights of workers into law. We have a situation in this country, not only do the workers have no constitutional rights at work, you know, it is the, both the culture and the law that they have no say in production. Abolitionists drove the 13th, 14th, 15th Amendments from the Constitution. Suffragists drove the 19th Amendment from the Constitution. Mm -hmm. Movements drive rights into the fundamental frameworks of governance. We never had an environmental movement in this country because trees and forests and streams and cougars and bears, they have no rights under our structure of governance. They are property under the law. All this is about creating special legal privileges for one set of people to govern another set of people. In terms of humans representing humans in the representative form of government, every time you move up, fewer and fewer people are making the decisions for more and more people, and they live farther away. So they know less and less about the reality you know, of, of either the natural systems or the human systems and what people are thinking, what they're doing. We can't change what the corporations do. We have no power. We have no authority in that category. We can change what we've been doing. And so it means working in a different capacity to work with groups to reframe the issue and then make binding law in the municipality which challenges the authority of a minority of people acting through corporations to nullify the vision that people have in their communities. That work has now resulted, over the past couple of years, in, in 100 municipalities across the state passing local laws that we've drafted. Successful democracy school means people changing their work and how they do their work, which in a big picture sense, you know, 10,000 communities around the country start doing their work in a different way around different issues, you know, like Barnstead, New Hampshire, uh, first town to strip corporations of constitutional rights as a, a means to stop corporate water withdrawals. Our water is ours and we want to be able to make decisions. European corporation wants to suck uh, three, over 300,000 gallons uh, a day out of the aquifer under Barrington and Nottingham. And when we heard what was going on over there, we said, well, we don't want that you know, to happen in our town. People's wells will dry up. Uh, big money can come in and suck up uh, so much good water and do whatever they want with it. Well, the Democracy School showed us the education that we were missing. We can do things differently. We don't have to stay within the confines of the traditional settings of all the bureaucracies. When you take the route that we took with the ordinance where it's local rights, and self-governance, those things together assure you the right to speak up and say what you want in your town. No corporation doing business within the town of Barnstead shall be recognized as a person under the United States or New Hampshire Constitution. It means that we have control of our resources and that ultimately any decision that's made in this town about how our resources are used will be made by the people. I don't want to sound like George Washington and Thomas Jefferson. I believe it starts out with the people. Laws are made to be changed. All those in favor, indicate by saying aye. Aye. And hopefully other towns will look at this and say we can do this as well. These democracy schools are now being taught at a dozen different locations around the United States. We need the town boards there. We need our county legislators there. School teachers should take it. I think it should be essential for law students. I want my kids to go see it come to the democracy school. I want, to, I want them to take it. The younger the people are when they start learning about the real histories in this country, the better it is. All American citizens really should be taking it. It's good to come here because we find out we're not alone. It gave a lot of hope for me. If we don't put our faith in people uh, to make decisions that are democratically derived, then where the hell are we going to put our faith?